So you're thinking about getting into uh, CNC, maybe laser engraving, 3D printing, die cutting. X, Y, Z, what does that mean? You know, what does Z have to do with this? Gerbils, do I need to have a gerbil? G-code, do I need a decoder ring? Who is Arduino? Do I need a slicer? Maybe a candle? What's a cura? Is that a cure for something? This is for beginners who somebody are just trying to get into this and I'm going to explain some of these very basic terms coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop and what we're going to talk about here are some of the basic terms that has to do with uh, CNC, laser engraving, uh, die cutting, you know, perhaps you have a, uh, a Cricut or a Silhouette uh, machine for die cutting uh, vinyl and fabric and whatnot. And those are a little bit different than the uh, 3D printers and the CNC and laser engravers on the hobby level because the Silhouette and the Cricut are pretty much plug and play. They have their own software and there's a whole lot less fussing around with those than there is with a uh, hobby type CNC machine, laser engraver, or a 3D printer. But the same terms of X, Y, and Z axis still apply. Okay, so we'll start with the very, very basics. And yeah, if you're already into this, you don't need to keep watching this because you already know what X, Y, and Z is. But okay, your X axis is the horizontal travel, left to right, right to left. That's your X axis. Now you have to think in 3D here because the y-axis is vertical, but I don't mean vertical as in this way, I mean vertical as in this way. So you have y minus and y plus. That's your y-axis. Now z, or sometimes called z, is your vertical travel, your vertical axis, whether it be for uh, your die cutter when the knife comes down and engraves, or I should say cuts, or on your CNC when the router comes down, puts a bit into the work, and then moves it around. And we're not going to get into all the absolute details of all these things on how to focus lasers and all that, subjects of uh, different videos. I'm just trying to give you an overview of what this stuff is. So there are your axis directions defined. X-axis again is horizontal. Y-axis is vertical, as in vertical travel this way. And your Z or Z-axis is your travel up and down. Okay, next, you know, people talk about gerbil. What, what is a gerbil? Well, gerbil is, stands for GRBL. And GRBL is a firmware for the Arduino boards. And, okay, who's Arduino? Well, that's what the board's called. That's your control board on your uh, most of the uh, hobby level 3D printers and CNC machines. Uh, most of the 3018s have some form of Arduino board on it and uh, all of the uh, Creality, I shouldn't say all, most of the Creality printers, 3D printers have uh, the Arduino based board on it. Uh, Big Tree Tech does make another board but it's still kind of based on Arduino. So that uses uh, GRBL which is a firmware for the Arduino boards that controls the stepper motors and the spindles or lasers, uh, depending on what you have, and it uses G-code. Okay, no, you don't need a decoder ring. What's G-code? Okay, uh, G-code is a code that begins with the letter G. Ah, brilliant. That's how I got the uh, name. That's because the letter G, it signifies preparatory codes. Uh, that tells the machine what kind of motion is required or which offset values to use. The codes beginning with G are almost always found at the start of a line of G code. Uh, for example, G00 tells the machine to move at maximum speed. Uh, G02 tells it to move in a clockwise circular motion. However, and not to confuse you, and you don't really need to get into all the specifics of this, not all G codes start with the letter G. Now, it's most common that the uh, beginning with the letter G are extremely common, but all 26 letters of the alphabet are used. S, for example, defines speed. F is feed rate. Uh, the letter X controls the horizontal 
Now we're getting back to the x-axis. The letter Y controls the vertical motion. You're back to the y-axis. And the letter Z, or Z, controls the vertical axis. The numbers next to that letter signify the distance moved by the machine, most often in M&Ms or millimeters. Uh, almost all of these are set up in the metric system, so if you don't understand metrics, which are really, really easy, actually, you're, you're going to need to learn it. Uh, it's, everything's visible by 10, so it's very, very simple. Okay, next, uh, well, what's a slicer? You know, do I need to, like, buy a slicer to slice a beef or on my, uh, oh, it makes me hungry, maybe slice bread? Now, a slicer is, uh, it's also called slicing software. It's computer software used by the majority of the 3D printing processes for the conversion of a 3D object model to specific instructions for the printer. In particular, the conversion is usually taking a file in STL format. That would be the suffix code at the end of your file. Well, here we're going to get into another thing, Candle. Uh, Candle is a very popular software with uh, CNC machines and 3D printers. Uh, there's also Lightburn. There's, you can get into all kinds of different software. There's Cura. Uh, it's a software. Cure is a software. Candle is a, a software. Uh, if you have a die cutter, like uh, I have a Cricut Maker, that uses uh, Design Space. They have their own software that resides in your computer, and you can design your project. And if you get into die cutting, that's a whole lot simpler than the CNC laser engraving and 3D printing. But those who like a challenge or want to get into some of this stuff, on the uh, really user level, you need to get into the like the 3018 CNCs and laser engravers and the uh, 3D printers because that's a whole other adventure and it makes you think. Uh, you know, you don't need to know a whole lot of algebra or you don't need to learn a whole bunch of special computer codes or anything like that. You don't really need to learn programming. Uh, a lot of it has software that will help you through it and guide you through it. And after you do your first few projects, you can move on to uh, designing more complicated things in 3D modeling and uh, that type of thing. So getting back to the slicer, that converts your STL file, which you can then, it converts it to G-code, which then you send to your, for example, your 3D printer, and you make your object with it. So I'm not going to get into all the things about um, setting up a 3D printer. That's a different video whole different set of uh, circumstances, same thing with the CNC, routing or laser engraving. It's all separate subjects. There's lots of them out there. Uh, there's lots of files you can use uh, on a website called Thingiverse. If you want to uh, download some sample things to make as you're just getting into this. But my whole point of this video was to answer some questions and no a question is not stupid if you don't know the answer. Unless you're asking something like, what color is Washington's white horse? Yeah, yeah, let's go back to elementary school with that kind of stuff. No, this is to answer some very basic questions. And as I used to tell my apprentices when I was an electrician, if you don't know, ask. There is no such thing as a stupid question if you don't know the answer. And it's better to ask ahead of time rather than just to assume, because if you spell out the word assume, it makes an ass out of you and me. That's why you need to ask those questions. And no, it's not a stupid question. No, everybody has to learn this stuff somewhere. Nobody's born understanding what X, Y, and Z is. That Z is not a Marvel character, but actually your vertical travel on your CNC or your uh, 3D printer. Okay, hope you found this little video a little bit enlightening and uh, informative. If you did, we always appreciate that thumbs up. It helps the channel. And of course, we're always looking for subscribers. So next to that subscribe button, there's a little bell. Click that bell, you'll be notified when I post another video. I'm Roger, in the shop. See you on the next one.